Yep. Hey there, it's Brian Sebastian. We'll be reviewing some more women on TV. TV iTunes 247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, and iHeartRadio and all the platforms around the world. So I've not done it in the library with mask on and everything. This is an interesting one and a new one for me. But besides that, you do it wherever you can these days, right, Rob? Oh, absolutely. All right, do this. All right, Rob, where are you coming from? And what are you working on? What do you got new? Hey, I'm uh, Rob Jankowski. I'm coming from Philly, just outside of Philly, Pennsylvania. Um, so something new that I'm working on, we just released a film, Attached Paranormal. It's a uh, paranormal horror film that's out now on a bunch of platforms. We are currently starting pre-production on our uh, next film as well. Oh, that sounds good. Talk about that. Horror never goes out of style, does it? It's always around. At one yeah. point, they used to always dump it the month of August or in the beginning of the year. Now it's year round. It's the yep. one thing that it's got a built in filter that I think is box proof, uh, positive in a way, meaning people will always go see a horror film. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a paranormal horror. Uh, it was a COVID film. So we were in pre-production on it before COVID hit. And when COVID hit, we kind of had to uh, dramatically rethink and resimplify the whole thing. Uh, so during the shutdown, when, when a lot of productions were shut down, we uh, still filmed. We still made the movie, <clears throat> obviously, with a lot of uh, simplification on that to do that safely, you know, for everyone to be safe. Um, but horror, definitely, it is one of the only genres or few genres that actually translates well into every country. Certain genres, like, just do not translate well into other countries and vice versa. So, um, yeah, that was definitely the film that we chose to uh, do the production on during COVID. So um, I did it a little different, though. I went a little old school with it. So it's a little slower pace on purpose, um, beginning to middle and then building to like the end. Everything's like near the end. But um, no, we want to go a little old school, more like how silent films were. Some of the original talkies were where you have to actually use your mind and and kind of fill in the blanks and, and wander a little bit with your brain. So some people love it and some people um, some people don't like to do that because they're so used to films today that are there's so much going on all the time that it just keeps you going. Um, but it was definitely fun. We had fun doing it. Um, I always put a little quirky thing somewhere hidden in there, too. So there's one or two of them for people to uh, try to find while they're watching it. But, um, you know, it was definitely tough in a way because we had to cast everything remotely. Some of the cast members had to film from their own location, send the footage in, and then we just edited it together um, in post. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of this, put it this way, originally the original script was a lot more, um, you know, studio, like big scares and uh, a lot of over the top things. But when we simplified it, we really went with a realistic timeline of events. So I don't know if you ever ghost hunted. I did a lot when I was a teenager, but it really follows a more realistic timeline of events of ghost hunting and, and how that comes together um, until the spirit or ghost or demon, what you have you uh, starts interacting back or poking back with you. So um, but it's definitely a fun film, definitely a film that I think uh, most will enjoy. I think people should, uh, you know, check it out. Where can you see it now? And talk about what makes you scared. What scares the hell out of you? Yeah. So right now you can see it. Oh, I mean, there's platforms it's on that I didn't even know it was going to be on. Um, but Amazon Prime for rental or purchase. Some of the on-demands with cable companies. So check with your local cable company. Uh, Dish Network on-demand. It's on Apple Plus for rental or purchase. Um, pretty much, I would say at this point, check check any of the platforms that you use because it very well is there. Um, go on your, whatever platforms you use the most and search for the title attached paranormal and it'll pop up. Talk about what scares you and why. So what scares me, I think what scares me the most with, with horror or paranormal is the unknown. So I don't necessarily say that I believe hundred percent in paranormal, but I don't say that I don't. And I think the reason why I say that I don't or that I don't choose to say that I do is because I really do. I'm just afraid to say that I do. Um, 
So when I'm watching a horror film, I could be watching a, a real scary horror film, right? I'm the guy, and I, I don't mean to say this, but I'm the guy that'll close one eye and peek out of the other when it's a real scary scene, right? So I'll admit that. So I do get scared, and I think that's me saying that I do believe. Um, but yeah, I love a good horror film. I really love watching horror films during October for Halloween, building up to Halloween. So I'm really, with like films, I'm really, I'm like not on a schedule, but there's certain times of years. I like certain types of genres. There's certain times of the day. So I like action films, something scary or real action-y at night during the day is more of like a uh, comedy or a drama. So, uh, you know, it really just depends. Talk about getting the cast to do their specific scenes via Zoom. I'm sure you didn't sign up for that one, but you made the best of what you could. Talk about what that process was like, because if you can do that, I guess you can do almost anything, right? Yeah, I mean, it was it was fun. It was difficult at the same time. Luckily, I, I was able to cast actors that um, could get it done. You know what I mean? I could trust that they could get it done on their end. But yeah, I mean, I had to direct direct from my remote area to where they were to try to set up the scene, help them set up the scene the way I wanted it to be and shoot it the way that I wanted it to look and sound. So, um, I mean, it, it was difficult, but we got it done. Like I said, the film, we, we had to simplify everything no matter what to be able to safely shoot during COVID. So that, that kind of helped as well with uh, getting things done the way that we had to do them at that time. But I'm glad and the, the other cast and crew are glad that we were able to keep going and, and do something during the COVID shutdown. What, when did you know that you wanted to be a filmmaker and why? What did it for you? Yeah, so when I was a kid, I really fell in love with, with films and movies when I was a kid. Um, and it just always fascinated. I wasn't just fascinated with like the film, like, oh, I want to be an actor. But like I always was fascinated with every part of it, every segment of it on. I wonder what went into making it, how they wrote it, how they made it, how they did the audio, how they added in the Foley sounds and I was always fascinated with the whole process. And from a young age, I, you know, me and some of my friends did that. So about 13, I got my own camera, digital camcorder was like an eight millimeter tape, I think at that time. But we started making a lot of our own short films. And at that point I was actually editing, I'd RCA that into VHS decks and between like three decks and my original camcorder, we would edit cut and paste and, and get it done. Uh, you know, it's just for our enjoyment at the time and, and having fun, but um, you know, there was a time about so between 13 and like 16 that I really, I, I was, I'd say a troubled kid. I got into a lot of trouble. So, uh, there was some hard times and films at that time and movies, even TV movies at that time actually like changed my mood about a lot of things and helped me get through to the next day, that time of my life. So that, that I found extraordinary. I thought that was so awesome that a film can touch people that deep. <clears throat> Sometimes people don't even realize it's happening, but it touches them. It can change their thoughts on life. It can change their mood for the day. It can motivate them. Uh, that part is awesome. And that's, that's when I knew a hundred percent that I wanted to uh, definitely do this as a career in my life. Who did you look up to when it came to filmmakers like me? If you make you remind me of why I like George Romero. Uh, Dawn of the Dead was my favorite one because it was filmed in a mall. I actually saw it in a mall like this, and I thought it was the same mall, but it wasn't. And then you yeah. know, when I saw it, it was at a midnight screening, and there were seven of us there. We walked out of there scared to death because we're like, we're the only ones there. There's seven cars in the parking lot. We're walking out. We're like, this is really scary. Like, we were in that movie. It was, it was yeah. I'll never forget that. And that's yeah. why I like George because of that movie. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of movies. I, I'm, you know, I was an 80s kid, so I love like all 80s, anything 80s. Um, but who I looked up to a lot and then people that inspired me was uh, I always have like my two main go to's because you could list, you know, you could list a lot, really. But my two mains are Al Pacino and Denzel Washington. I love them. Love, love all their work. Um, especially their work from like the eighties, eighties and nineties that they did really inspired me. Like in my teenage years, I was a bad boy. I really liked Scarface. I love Scarface. Um, but you know, the Godfather, a lot of his early, his early work for Al Pacino, Denzel Washington, 
like everything he does, I really love. In the '80s too, he had he was like breaking out in the '80s. So, um, but th- he was definitely really uh, inspirational for me, and I still love everything that he does. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, hopefully, I can strive to, uh, you know, work like them, and maybe one day work with them. That would be awesome. And, and the thing about Denzel is, is that a lot of people don't know he really wants to direct more. So yeah. you make me want to see him on that that side of the thing. I mean, he doesn't really want to act that much. But when you get twenty million dollars, like, what do you do, right? Yeah, well, yeah. You, you, you can do that project. Of, okay, I'm going to direct my next one. So you remind me of that, so I can see you kind of doing that. What yeah. do you have coming up? So the next film that we're going to be doing pre-production on, it, I can't say too much because I don't want people to. Uh, you know, take an idea or anything, but it's a cop drama. That's about all I will say. So I don't, I'm not going to stick with one genre. I have multiple original scripts that we are going to be producing over the next few years in literally almost every genre. And I don't want to be pinned to one genre. So I'm going to constantly change it up. Um, <clears throat> but the next one is, it's definitely going to be a good one. Good for you. Talk about this. What would you say to inspire those people as you were growing up? Because now you're a filmmaker. What would you say to those people who got locked down in COVID but wanted to do something? Because you made a film doing that and then leading yeah. up to 22, making more films. What do you yeah. say to them? I mean, people that want to do it, I say go for it. Um, you know, if it's someone that just has the, the, the dream of it, you know, always dream big. I'm always a big believer in that. And more comes down to the passion for me. That's a big thing that I preach to people is you have to have the passion uh, to succeed. So I don't care what it is that you want to do in life. If you have the internal passion to do it and just don't give up, you're going to get there and do it. So um, filmmaking, acting, what have you, it's not an easy business to be in. Even once you're in it, it's not easy to stay in. So uh, it is hard, but I definitely think if it's what you want to do, go for it. And give you social media links for everybody so they can reach out to you. And again, repeat where they can see your film. Most important, right? Yeah. So uh, Twitter and Instagram are both kind of new to both of them, but it's the same uh, handle on both Jankowski underscore Rob. Um, the movie is out on Amazon Prime, a lot of on demands for cable companies, Dish Network on demand, um, Apple Plus, uh, iTunes, Google Play, Microsoft, uh, uh, Voodoo, Fandango. Uh, honestly, there's so many now that I don't even know them all. So like I said, just check your local platforms that you use and it's probably there. Just search for the title attached paranormal. Um, check it out, show love support. Um, not only for me, but for the rest of the cast and crew, cause everybody attached actually gets percentage payouts as well. So it helps everybody. Um, and it also will help budget of the next film as well. So, uh, but yeah. Good for you, Rob, and smart move by doing that. That, gets, that keeps everybody participated and getting people to come out and support that. Congratulations oh, yeah. on that. That's not easy, you know? No, yeah. No, I'm glad we got it done. We're all glad that we got it done and got it out there, so. And I have to always say this. If you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it. I'm yeah. Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More. We will see you next week.